Uh, Dara Cassidy is head of uh, online education in the Royal College of Surgeons and previously director of uh, online learning in Hibernia College. Um, uh, Dr. Cassidy has done a lot of uh, a lot of work in in areas to do with online presence and online community, and makes use of these in in kind of suggesting ways that we can better uh, plan and and implement uh, remote teaching and learning. Um, I know Dara a while now from our work together with a colleague from UL, Dr. Angelica Riskes. Uh, uh, we all work together on a national forum project to um, develop an online course for lecturing staff in the area of uh, online teaching and learning. And I think, Dara, that, that course was by any measure a great success in terms of its, its popularity and its, uh, its positive reception and, uh, and, and its impact uh, on the sector. So all, all of that really down to you, Dara, in terms of leading and, and directing and coordinating that project. And, and a pleasure indeed on working with you on it. Uh, so today, Dara is going to talk to us about the kind of issues we've all been facing as we try to, to teach and support students at a distance, uh, when a lot, I suppose, of what is familiar has been removed, you know, in terms of invisible cues and supports and furniture indeed <laughs> that we consciously and unconsciously um, rely on in the in the on campus or the the face-to-face uh, -face environment so from there dara is going to talk to us about her work and her research and her thoughts into those, those issues of online presence and online community and give us i think some some takeaway lessons for us in terms of planning uh, effective uh, remote teaching and uh, and learning so i'm going to go quiet here dara but I'll, I'll i'll be here and i would encourage um people to use the q a feature along the bottom to ask any questions uh, as we go and also perhaps to use the chat feature now just to say hi introduce themselves say who they are we're up to 45 participants at the moment i see uh, over to you anyway dara thanks so much Okay, thanks very much, Gerald, for the introduction and the and the the nice things that you said. Um, you're welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming along on this um, uh, winter's lunchtime. I know uh, it's uh, there's a lot of calls on our time, and, and maybe sitting in front of another webinar on another screen is not the, the most attractive. But hopefully, uh, it'll be interesting enough for you. Um, I'm going to just start you thinking really uh, my aim is about this whole thing about presence in, in, in online teaching and learning. So it's it's not like there's any kind of earth shattering formula, I, I think, or any kind of new thing that you're going to hear that, that that's going to um, maybe transform the way. I shouldn't be saying this at the start of the, at, at, of, of the talk. Um, but but I think often people feel that there's something out there, something vastly different than what they're doing that's going to change dramatically or will have a dramatic impact on, on what they're doing, on, on how they teach online. Um, and, and really a lot of it is, is quite, um, it's little things, it's little and, and maybe obvious things if, if we just think about them. But I think the, the problem is that we often don't think about them. We think about other, other things. Um, so that's my my goal here today is to maybe to start you, you thinking about uh, a different way of approaching uh, how you teach people when you're teaching people online. Um, like the road said, I ha I'm head of online education in RCSI and prior to that I uh, was um, director of online learning in Hibernia College. So I've been in the kind of online blended education sphere for a long time, almost 20 years at this stage. Um, and uh, I, it, it's something that I'm particularly interested in. I think when I started in, in the area, I was like many people who came from an industry background, originally an e-learning background, I was very interested in the content and content production and uh, good practice in, in, in content and structure and trying to have cool content and nice multimedia and, and videos and make things interesting from that point of view, which is very important and, and great if, if you can do that. But I, I, as the longer I've been involved in the in the sector, the more I've come to focus on the kind of the relationship side of, of teaching and learning and the emotion side and how we feel about things. And so when we are in the online environment, things don't work exactly as they would as, as we're used to uh, when we're teaching in the face-to-face in -face on campus. 
So, so that's the kind of things that I'm, I'm going to be looking at and, and hopefully start you thinking about. Um, one of the things that I was threatening to do was put you into breakout groups at various stages, but Vero uh, informed me that you're off the hook because the, the platform uh, doesn't support it the way it's set up today. So I will hopefully uh, be getting you to engage um, in a more, in, in a less threatening way through um, word clouds and things like that. So uh, hopefully uh, you will, if you have your phones ready, there, there'll be a few opportunities to do that. Um, and it, it would be very useful to get some, some feedback back from you about different things. So that's a rather long-winded start. Um, uh, trying to advance the slide now. Oh, sorry just, about that. Yep, there you go. Um, yeah, so just to start you thinking about this, I have my first word cloud of the day. Um, and, and what I'm interested in is think about your students, not your students now um, in, in COVID times, but your students as they were before uh, on campus, whether that's in uh, Cork as we have here or, or in uh, Tralee. Uh, and, and think about what kind of supports are available to them. So don't, you know, don't be, don't, don't be too concerned about having a perfect answer. So just um, any kind of supports that you, you, that are available to your students that supports their, their learning. So you're, you're, you've got a whole um, learning ecosystem, as it were, associated with a university or a college. Um, and if you could just take a minute there to go to this URL, it's answergarden.ch forward slash 173498. Or if you have a mobile phone with a QR reader, if you just point it at the screen there, that should take you to the uh, correct place. And um, we just get, I'll take just a minute or two to, to get some feedback from you on that. So what kind of supports are available to your students? So you type it in and click submit. If you're doing it on a phone, it's not very responsive. So you have to kind of scroll over to get to the submit button. Um, I'm just gonna minimize this here. Okay, great. So we take another minute or two, just if anyone else wants to put, put in some more, feel free. Okay. That's great. I'm gonna refresh now and we get the up-to-date. So what we have here then, you've got Zoom and Canvas, sorry, and Canvas, which are obviously um, platforms that we're using now at the moment and, and, and very important for the kind of to provide a structure in terms of Canvas for uh, studies for students. We've also got the library, we've got the disabilities office, um, eBooks, VLE, peers, mentorship, chat before class, coffee hangout, um, tell department, the lecturer, WhatsApp group, accessibility, uh, accessible hood, hood. I, I don't know if my desk is on at the moment, I can't, I can't read that. Um, but that's great. So you can see that there's, uh, within the, the ecosystem of the, the university or the college, there's a lot of things happening that supports your students. Um, I, and you can divide them into kind of uh, infrastructure. So you've got the dedicated space that the learning takes place, uh, the various facilities you have, the equipment, you've got a canteen, you've got a library, you use sports facilities, and then you've got the kind of social support. So you've got your classmates. You've typically, if you're going into a, a, a campus every day, you've got a teacher contact, your teacher's in the same room as you. You've got the clubs and society, IT services, events, student welfare services. So these are the things that we typically associate with being in being on campus as a as a learner. 
Um, and that's just to kind of illustrate some of them there. So it's it's the it's the, the the things that are related to teaching and learning. So this is the, the items related to that, the spaces, the equipment, but it's also very much it's the social aspect. Uh, it's a place to uh, meet friends, meet new people, expand your horizons, get involved in sporting activities, in cultural activities. You have the library. So within that, we have a, a, a structure that supports our students to learn. And, and it's one that we don't necessarily even think about all the time. Um, and the two kind of the biggies there, I think, are dedicated time and dedicated space. So if you are uh, going into campus every day, nobody expects you to be at home, um, you know, homeschooling your kids or washing the dishes or um, the range of other things that, uh, impact on your time when you're when you're at home and similarly you've got spaces that are set up for learning so you've got lecture theatres and you've got seminar rooms and you've got labs and you've got all those things that are configured to support your learning and if, if you look at learning from a, 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 a sociocultural perspective these places these learning places and dedicated spaces have associated with them ways of behaving. So they have what you could nearly call scripts for behavior. Um, and those scripts are very familiar to us all. So particularly as, as lecturers or teachers, we know that in a lecture theater, we give lectures, students take notes. In a seminar room, we have we facilitate smaller group discussion in a laboratory, we work with equipment or whatever. Um, we also have the experience as teachers and as students of, of going to school from the age of four or five and going to a physical building and being in a class with people the same age as us, having a teacher and, and that whole support system that we take for granted as part of our education. So as a lecturer or somebody who's thinking about developing a course when we're on campus we don't really have to think about a lot of these elements they're all in the background and they're happening and they're supporting our students learning they're affecting our students but it's not something that we necessarily have to give much attention to we need to just focus on well what what's my role in this what what modules do i have to deliver which are lectures which are lab sessions what do i have to do and everything else is just, it, it, it's taken care of. When you move that into the online environment, everything disappears. Not always, it doesn't have to, but automatically th th those things that, that were there are suddenly gone. And all that's left is you now as the teacher and your students as the, uh, as the participants in your course. Now, obviously, they still have some access to library and they still have uh, your VLE that you mentioned and, and your platforms. But a lot of those wider ecosystems of support are not there. And, and as a teacher, this means that you have to start thinking about how it is that I can not make up. You can't make up for, for, for everything else that happens, but, but, but you, you need to think about how you design what it is you're doing with your students in a way that um, that supports them in this environment that does not have the same level of support that they would have or that they would expect on a on, on a campus um, now obviously that doesn't mean that you have to become a, an IT expert and, and be there to, to answer any questions they have about every question that they have about their uh, you know how their laptop works or anything like that but you do have to think about the fact that you have a group of people who uh, are, are learning together in, 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 a, in, in a particular class, but they may not know each other and they may not know you, when, particularly for students who are starting online, but this isn't, uh, it, it's not a situation that we have at the moment that a group of students um, were on campus and are, are, are now working remotely, but they may know each other. So, that has implications for how we go about structuring uh, our courses and, and what it is we do and where we put our focus. So a lot of the things that are um, 
uh, implicit. So, so things that we don't think very much about uh, are things that become much more central when we're, we're thinking about planning for, for, for online delivery. And so it's difficult for us to know what exactly it is we should be doing, like what's important, how, how is it that we, um, that we develop this kind of support system or this feeling of a, of a community uh, that can support learners to, 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 um, to, to develop uh, to, to develop a class spirit, a class um, a sense of collaboration, a sense of working together and, and working uh, and learning from each other. So one of the, um, uh, an article that was written about two years ago, uh, it was uh, Mark Brown and uh, from DCU and Lorraine, uh, sorry, Lorraine Delaney, um, it was called To Walk Invisible Distance, Distance Students Experience in a Dual Mode University. And it was a very interesting article um, because it included the experiences of students who had engaged in distance learning programs and, and, and what it felt like for them to be students in those programs. And just I'll pick out a, a few quotes that I thought were, were, were interesting in the research. Um, one person there said that the least enjoyable part was the feeling of being alone with assignments. Um, somebody else, I, I didn't attend my conferral partly because there was a good chance that I might not know any of the students there on the day. And the third one, I never felt part of the university. So you, you can see what's coming across there is this feeling of kind of, dislocation and not being part of anything. And, and this is the, the, the key um, requirement for lecturers and teachers and people, tutors, people who are operating in an online environment. This is something they, they need to really think about. How do I get my students? How do I help my students to feel connected? Uh, and, and one of the, the, the tools that we have for, for doing this is this framework, um, which is quite an old framework at this stage, um, developed by uh, Garrison Anderson and Archer in 2001, called the Community of Inquiry. And Garrison Anderson and Archer were operating in a totally asynchronous context. So this came out of um, distance learning that was totally asynchronous. And, and it was basically based largely on uh, interaction through discussion forums, uh, but it, it stands up uh, very well even through to today to, to COVID teaching, uh, where we have a lot more tools, synchronous tools at our, our, our disposal. So we have these um, Zooms and Blackboard Collaborator and MS Teams and all these tools that allow us to to, to engage synchronously uh, with people. So, um, but. It, it, it's still one of the most researched and robust frameworks um, to support this idea of, of learning and teaching in an online environment. And it focuses very much on this idea of presence and it pulls out three types of presence. Um, so social presence, cognitive presence and teaching presence. So social presence is the kind of obvious one. So it's the ability of the participants to project their personal characteristics into a group and, and represent themselves as real people. Um, and that's very important if you think about um, how you, how people get to know each other and, and, and get to trust each other and, and, and create a, a, an environment where people can uh, trust each other enough to maybe discuss things that are difficult or um, to be vulnerable in terms of uh, learning situations where people feel they're not very confident and they don't know, um, you know, they want they don't don't want to come across as, as stupid or not very, um, you know, as if they're missing the mark. So this kind of social presence uh, is, is very important to, to try and develop this. So, so this sense that um, we are a real person, you know, I'm a real person, I'm there, I'm part of this group, and that you over time me as a teacher you get to know me and similarly that the other people in the group are also people that become real to you and, and you get to know them and, 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 and feel them as real people you get a sense of who they are. The cognitive presence is um, the extent to which you are engaging your students cognitively so basically how 
engaged are they in what's going on in their learning and and, and it's not something that you can do but it's something that you can facilitate through the design of your your teaching approach and that's where the teaching uh, presence comes in so that's really like the instructional design so it's the decisions that you make about uh, how you're going to teach a course and if you're if you're coming from it you know from the, your traditional um mindset of campus-based teaching you may be very focused on um, the activities, so the labs, the, the the content, the things people do, and, and the, the the idea of how they interact around that may not be something that you you would have foregrounded uh, in the past. Whereas when you're planning for delivering in the online, that's the thing that you're really thinking about. You're thinking about what kind of tasks, what kind of activities, what kind of structures can I put in place that are going to encourage these people who don't know each other. To, to build up trust in each other, to get to know each other and to, and to work together so that they can learn from each other. So in a, an, an online environment, there's typically three kind of learning sources. There's the instructor, um, so the student instructor, rela instructor relationship, the student content relationship, and then there's the, the student student, the peer relationship. And all those three aspects are, are a core part of the um, development of, um, of, 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 of community and, and, and of the learning process. Now, if we're just focused on the, the content piece, um, where it, it's like one, one um, leg, one leg on a stool. So you're missing that, that relationship piece that is really important uh, when in any kind of um, educational uh, interaction, but particularly needs to be intentional when we're designing for the for the online context. Um, so the community inquiry, as I said, is um, a, a really helpful way of thinking about um, the, the, the things that we need to attend to. So we need to attend to this idea of social presence, being there, being, being seen to be there, being visible, being available, how we're going to, the, the types of activities that we're going to ask that, that, that are going to encourage people to actually really engage um, cognitively. So really think about what, what it is you're asking them um, and not just kind of maybe facile, um, for example, just say using discussion forum, you can use a discussion forum to, to develop this social presence in you know, people um, introducing themselves and talking a little bit about them. But to get to the cognitive presence bit, you need to use those discussion forums much more intentionally. So you need to pose you know, very kind of specific questions that will allow people to um, dig deep into a particular area. You need to be able to give them feedback on the responses, you need to uh, engage with them and, and, and move them along um, uh, in their knowledge. So it, it's about that engagement piece. Um, and, and you do that through teaching presence. So this sense of, of, of someone being there. And, and it is just this idea that when a person, when a student thinks about their class, that they, they think of a network, so they, they, they think of the fact that there's a, a teacher there, that they have a sense of who the teacher is, they know the teacher, and they know the people in their class. So just to, as I said, this, it's, it's a very well-researched framework um, and robust framework and has been shown to um, play a big part in um, this idea of presence in, in persistence in, and success in online education. So where um, instructors manage to develop this sense of presence, people are much, much more likely not to drop out. They're much more likely to stay to the end and to attain. Their, attain, their level of attainment has been shown to be higher. And in terms of presence, just to break it down, on a, on a very kind of simple level, it's, it's just about being 
these things to, uh, that's on the screen, positive, friendly, knowledgeable, empathetic, and consistent. So if you can, um, as a teacher, give that sense of, of somebody who is, you know, positive, friendly, open, uh, approachable, then it's, it's, it's breaking down that, that, that transactional distance, that distance between yourself and, and the people who are out there, who are your students. So I'm just going to get you to go again to um, uh, an answer garden and it's a different um, code at the end. Uh, but again, you have a, a QR code if you want to, to access it that way. And just if you can fire up a few thoughts yourselves about how you can go about developing presence um, in the online environment. So you're, you're now um, working online all the time. Well, I presume most of them are maybe limited uh, campus-based engagement. But what type of practical things can you do? And as I said at the start, they're not always earth-shattering things. They're, they're just little nudge things, but they're things that um, can help facilitate this environment. It's, it's, it's creating the supportive environment for people to learn. So if you just um, have a go there and just throw in some ideas for me, I'll open up the, uh, the other one. My toolbar, the toolbar is blocking me here. I'll just... Uh, and move it down. Oh, yeah. And I will refresh and see if anything come up yet. Great. Okay, so. We've got the big one there is camera on, and and that is, uh, that that is a big one in uh, in in the original content. As I said, this was very much an asynchronous environment, so we didn't have this opportunity. So, this is this provides a huge um, advance in in what was available to to us in the future in the past. Was is this idea of, of people at least being able to see you? And while it's not perfect, uh, you do get a better sense of somebody. So, as a teacher, although you mightn't you know you you mightn't be mad about the idea. It is really helpful for you to have your camera on. And, and if you really hate it, at least to have your camera on at the start and to say hello to people and welcome them uh, and, and give them the odd smile to make them feel, uh, give them a sense of, of who you are. Um, using quizzes, um, students using, uh, I think this is time for me to put on my, uh, my glasses actually. Breakout groups, a very good one, yeah. Breakout groups are great because um, they allow students to meet each other in smaller groups. A lot of these tools, while we're very familiar with, um, you know, Teams and Zooms and all those things, they, they're hard, they can be hard work and, and people still feel quite self-conscious and don't particularly like to be um, having to, um, to talk to big groups of people. Uh, particularly if they're unsure of, of what it is they're talking about, if they're being a bit tentative. So breakout rooms are a really nice way to break that down, to get students working in groups of uh, two or three on specific tasks. And then they can, uh, at the end of the breakout group, they can, they can report back to the wider group. And that really helps. Students using webcams. Again, in, in breakout groups, I think that's really helpful. Uh, in large groups, um, it's it can be a bit distracting after a while. I think it's it's definitely nice to to um, to use them uh, at the start of a session or at um, at various points, you know, where you have smaller groups. But if it's very big, it can be it, it can be a little bit distracting. Um, online chat forums can be great. Um, again, you often hear people say, "Okay, I've." I've I have a forum there, but nobody ever uses it. Um, so it, it, it's perceived that online chat forums are something that people don't want to engage with. But again, it's largely to do with your, your level of engagement as, a, as an instructor. So if you can create um, uh, the, the, the kind of the feeling around the chat group that uh, people are, are, you know, they're welcome to post, that they have specific questions that you'd like them to answer, that it doesn't have to be hugely formal, 
and um, it doesn't have to be perfect. So it's a, and that you yourself will respond to it. it, it it's about um, really responding to those students who are brave enough to take the initial steps in posting and getting back to them and being very positive. And, and through things like that, you can um, build uh, chat discussions into your weekly activities and they can be very, very successful. But it is it takes a little bit of work at the start in building up that kind of trust and that um, that uh, recognition by the students that these these chats, these discussions are important, are important part of what we're doing and, and you need to engage with them. So a lot of this work um, is work that really needs to be front loaded at the start. So when you're, you're, you first have the students. You're, you're creating the right expectations, you're helping to break down the barriers, helping people to feel confident and um, trying to get a sense yourself of who they are, because, uh, you know, it's not just the students, it's very difficult for the lecturers. Uh, and and this, these type of uh, activities, they're, they're time consuming as well, it takes time. Um, so it's about uh, trying to, 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 to kind of feel your way around that, uh, but, but trying to be as positive and as 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 open to to, to your students uh, as possible. Um, so student work, collaborative wiki, breakout groups, and grants. So there's loads of good ideas there. So things like um, a lot of those are would be kind of icebreaker activities, and they can be very helpful. People sometimes roll their eyes at icebreaker activities because you can get. Um, uh, they can be quite uh, seem quite forced, but I think any type of activity that it, it can be very related to the, the the particular subject area or domain, and just an easy question is 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 often a good icebreaker. So it doesn't have to be just you know to talk to your neighbour and find out everything about uh, them and, and report back to the group or, or things that might make people a bit uncomfortable. It's just something that you know that people will definitely be able to answer. Uh, and will have something to say about in in your your um, your particular area uh, is it can be a good icebreaker. So so there's lots of things there about um, using video uh, onboarding. Onboarding is really really important. So having some kind of uh, orientation process at the start when your students first join that um, introduces them to you to your, your class to where they can get any kind of help they need with technical issues um, the ability to find um, little you know help videos and how-to videos and, and all those things making all those things easily accessible and available and basically breaking down the barriers so that when you join a class an online class that you feel that this is something that you can participate in, that it's not it, there's not a, a, a um, a lot of barriers put in, in your in your way. So thanks very much for that. I'll just refresh it again, just in case there's anything else that uh, you put. Okay, there's tons of stuff. So um, so music at the Rimfield, that's a really nice idea. So like there's, there's, there's great ideas here from you guys. And I assume that the, a lot of these are things that you're doing already. Um, musical in, in, interlude, music at the room, that, 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 that can be a really nice thing to do. Um, in, if, if you're interested in music, it's 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 injecting a bit of your own personality, and somebody has your authentic self. It, that's really really important. Uh, Persona with no cut filters, absolutely. So it, it is that idea of projecting your authentic self is, is spot on. It's um, trying to as, as much as we can, and it can be difficult in the online environment, even using things like humor, because uh, and and particularly if you've got students from maybe different, a lot of different countries, it can be difficult to translate, but as much as possible, trying to convey a sense of who you are and to give the, the, the students an opportunity for them to do the same, to, 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 to convey themselves as, as real people. So great ideas there. Um, I've done, I've just put, put those kind of things into a, a table there, and it's exactly the type of things that you're talking about, but I've divided them then into kind of what you would categorize as say social presence, what is more um, teaching presence, and then that cognitive presence. So cognitive presence, cognitive presence, the strategies are the same whether you're working online or offline. It's about kind of posing those thought-provoking questions, 
identifying and clarifying misconceptions. And, and a big one is encouraging students to make their thinking explicit. So always kind of prompting, probing, trying to um, develop knowledge further and understanding and, 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 and helping people make connections, uh, encouraging different perspectives on things. So all those things um, are things that you would be doing regardless of, of, of the environment. But I suppose maybe we just need to be more, a lot of it is more text-based perhaps in the online environment, uh, or we need to be more um, uh, focused in things like, um, say, the Zoom sessions or Blackboard sessions, or we may be, it, it may be more um, tempting to just kind of have maybe a one-way uh, stream of, of, of uh, um, communication from us rather than trying to really tease out um, the, 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 the kind of the, the, the learning process for the students. Um, so one other area that I think that, that and it gets back to that asynchronous um, mode as well, is in how we even present ourselves on our on the VLE. And this is the last thing I say, I've been unconscious that I've been kind of wrapping on for a long time. Um, how we present ourselves on our, our VLE. So I'm just taking a screenshot here of a, um, say a week's activity for a course. And you can see I've, I've listed the things that I, I want people to do. They just click into it and, 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 and they can work through it. And it's grand. It's all there. It captures everything. So there's, there's content. There's um, a bit of uh, H5P. So it's, you know, some kind of interactive thing. There's um, something that we want students to do to write the difference between online and face And then there's a discussion. And then we have all the readings all gathered together. So gathered gathered together. So we have a nice kind of, um, you know, kind of checklist of things to be done. But there's no sense looking at that page of, of who the teacher is, who the class is, what's the wider context. It's just this is a series of tasks and things to be done. So I'll contrast it with this um, a different approach here, which I'm going to actually try and share the, the real life page. Um, again, move this out of the way. So me a second. Um, oh, yeah, okay, so this is um, another a web page, and it was developed for um, digitally engaged learning as something that we did over the, the summer uh, to help prepare lecturers for our um, going back to. Uh, for starting the new term in a, in a kind of an online, in a totally online way, or not totally, but largely online way. So we have here, this is a session delivered by, a weekly session delivered by uh, this particular um, colleague of mine. And just to, to take a look at the structure of, of what's done here, at the start, there's a kind of a welcome with a little, um, uh, you know, very short thing about this is what we're going to be looking at here is actually just the learning outcome. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk about engagement. And then there's a lovely little video here. And I, I'll just play a, a few seconds. Hi, everybody. My name is Jenny, and I'm an educationist based at HPEC, the Health Professions Education Centre. And for this week, what I want to do is work with you on tools, forums, and quizzes. So basically, the online activities that we can use in our virtual learning environment to support learning. And OK. so. The reason I played that video is just to give you um, a sense of the tone of it. It's very friendly. It's very conversational. It's short. And it's just, it's, it, it, uh, you get the sense that you're being spoken to directly. So it, it, it kind of helps to, to, to bridge that distance, which is what we're trying to do all the time when we're, we're working in the online world. We're trying to bridge that distance between um, for us where we are and our, and our learners where they are. Um, and then using just simple things like using um, headings here to, to kind of direct the students to, this is where you start, here's a thing. There's a little line about what it is. It's not just uh, reading, it tells you the name of it, you know, what's, it gives you a sense what might be in it. Um, and then discussion, and this is a discussion question and included a picture of a dog. There was no need for the dog, but it just, again, gives that sense of who the person is. This is their dog, um, a, a sense of a real person. And this was supported then by live workshops 
that were uh, associated with this content as well. So there was a live an opportunity to get a, um, a live kind of training workshop and then a follow up workshop where, where people could come uh, on a drop in basis if they wanted to follow up. So following the workshop, they tried something and now they'd like to come back and just tell us how it went or, or what um, any any challenges they might have encountered. So it's, it's that kind of feeling of uh, providing support and being supportive and then just follow activities and resources. So that's just um, just trying again, that's totally asynchronous. We're not meeting the person. Um, uh, they're, they're, they're the synchronous events were built into the, the picture, but, but it gives that sense of how it is that we can, even though we are um, mixing asynchronous and asynchronous, how we can convey who we are through through the asynchronous as well as through the synchronous. Um, so I think that's me. I've been uh, talking a lot for a long time, uh, which is not very good practice. So if, if there are any questions now, Garoad, I can't see them, but you can maybe throw them. Sure, throw them yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, I suppose just in case we run out of time in general, I'd like to thank you so much for such a wide ranging and talk taught, excuse me, provoking uh, presentation. Uh, it was great to, that so many colleagues uh, were able to make it. We we're up to 55 there at, at one stage, I think. Um, I think in the end, what we got was a really nice balance, you know, of the theoretical and and the, the uh, practical, nothing so uh, practical as good theory, they say. And that definitely seems to be the case here. Uh, and great that you were able to link up those different kinds of, you know, notions of online presence, uh, with some practical direction and ideas and, and great in, in general that, that you could join it up uh, with that experience, that kind of online remote moment that, that we're all having um, at the moment.